I want to make sure that we're not just in an echo chamber here. We're not just talking to ourselves. So I'm bringing on someone who I suspect is more reasonable than Joe Biden. I hope he's more reasonable than Joe Biden. This would be David Pakman, uh, David coming back to the show, a uh, nationally syndicated progressive talk show host on TV and radio. David, thank you for coming back to the show. The, the first time went so well, I had to come back for seconds. <laughs> I knew it. That's, I, that's, that's why we invited you back. And listen, I, I'm, I was disheartened to see that Joe Biden and Jen Psaki would not condemn the protests at all hours outside of the justices' homes and residential neighborhoods before their families. I suspect, I mean, I mean this sincerely, I'm not being facetious at all. I suspect you are more reasonable than the staffers at the White House now. Can we at least agree this is bad. It is bad to protest outside of Supreme Court justices' homes. Well, so do, do you, I suspect you want to have a good faith conversation about this. Is that a fair assessment so it we is. can speak freely here? You're not just looking to play gotcha here. I'm not. No, I, I, I'm okay, not. All right, That's so, not what we do on the show. So let's see. Um, I This is not a protest technique I would employ, right? But I have a large platform online where I'm going to reach way more people than going to anybody's house. So like my personal thing is I, this is not a protest technique I would employ. Let's go through like legality, morality, ethics, etc. Yep. Anything that is a criminal act like a Molotov cocktail, uh, destruction of property, what, whatever, it should be reported. If there's a crime, people should be charged. If you can get a guilty, guilty verdict, they should be you know sentenced. Fine. Very, very good. Yep. In terms of the speech aspect of this, you know, there's this case from the 90s, Madsen v. Women's Health Center, which found that it's okay for anti-choice protesters to go and protest outside the homes of just random workers at abortion clinics. Okay, now that's not my opinion. That's a decision that exists. Yep. Those are quite literally private citizens. They're just like medical workers, right? So if that's okay and we have a First Amendment, certainly showing up and protesting isn't against the law. Are you and I on the same page about that piece? No, because in the U.S. Code, 18 U.S. Code Section 1507, the law, the federal law, explicitly prohibits protesting outside of the homes of judges with the intention of influencing their decisions. So if the they were- The decision has been done though. No, it hasn't. The, the decision hasn't come out. There was a leaked draft of the opinion. So I, I would agree with you. It's not clear that they were in violation of the law if the decision had already come out and they were just expressing their anger. But because the decision has not come out, because it seems clear to me that the protesters are trying to change the, the course of how this decision is going to come and try to bring political pressure, to me, it seems quite clear this is a violation of federal law. No, no law lawyer I've spoken to says that this is against any law unless, unless some specific, you know, if there even if even something as relatively benign as a noise ordinance, let's say there's a noise ordinance that starts at 10 p.m. Yeah. If it's 11 and you're being loud, OK, but, now but we have something to talk about. But there's there's I know that that's not the law that I'm who says there's any law being broken here. That that is the law. I mean, the viewers are free to go check it out. But that that is a very specific law. There's also there's actually a Virginia statute, too. But I'm just talking about the federal law. 18 USC 1507. You can look it up. Now you might say, "Well, I don't like that law. I don't think it's just. I, just I think don't it's think a violation." It's applicable here in, I, I just don't think it's applicable at the homes of these individuals in Virginia, based on lawyers I've spoken to. Neither you or I are lawyers, so we may just be. But I can read the law. I mean, the, further. the statute is plain. Are, are you saying that you don't think that the the protesters are seeking to influence the decision? I haven't spoken to them, so I really can't say. But I mean, I you can hear what my, they're saying, my, right? What's that? You can hear the sort of things that they're chanting. They're not saying. I actually have not heard what they're chanting. I have not. Okay. I, I don't know what they're. What are they chanting? You tell me. They're chanting "My body, my choice." They're chant. They're chanting. Uh, you know, "My body, my choice" isn't change the 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 decision. Of course it is. That's they're, just their opinion, right? My body, my choice. They're, they're chanting in support of the of the ruling that will be overruled by the Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health Organization case. Listen, hey, listen. I think that if we want to get into the minutia of this at the legal level, yeah. I think you would have a hard time arguing that legally saying my body, my choice is equivalent to saying change your decision. D so I don't know David, that this wh is the why, best why, why, What would they be doing outside of the justices' homes 
before a decision comes out, after a leaked expressing opinion. Expressing their opinion. I mean, listen, but, but legally, right, their, their I don't opinion. think you're going to win on that. I don't think you're going to win on legally they were breaking the law because they said my body, my choice. It seems very weak. No, D David, they're not merely saying my body, my choice, and they're not merely posting some opinion online. They're going to the homes of these people. The, actually, the group that sent them, it's called Ruth Sent Us. They said that this is an unacceptable attack on women and LGBT, and we need to force them, right? That was the key word. We need to force them to change their views using a diversity of tactics. And we would acknowledge that peaceful protesting is just one tactic, so it seems like they're calling for other things. But, but well, even that word force, but, but what, is, now, what is that word force? Michael, now you're blending, now you're saying, well, they've used peaceful protesting, but they're calling for other things. No, 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 and but that, so they've broken. The, that I mean, isn't I, my, I, I that isn't my problem. No, no, I mean, I think that that is a separate issue, but the very fact that the organization that sent, I'm sorry? But you brought you yeah, yeah, no, that, in this conversation. That's that's a problem as well that they're calling for a diversity okay. of tactics. But the chief okay. problem that we're discussing here is that the organization that is taking responsibility for sending the mobs to the justices' homes says we need to force them to change their minds. We need to force them to not attack women and LGBT and all, all of the other uh, minority groups that they're discussing. So even the word force would suggest to me that that they are attempting to influence des the decision and therefore are in violation of this law. Yeah, I, I, I'm not trying to skirt the main point you're trying to make, which I am unsure I can identify, but I haven't seen that specifically said, so it's just hard for me to comment on it. What okay. I think All what right. I can you're speak pleading, to you're is, pleading, uh, pleading ignorance on this point. No, but, I'm not pleading ignorance. What, what I, what I can speak to is if any crime has been committed, charge them. Okay. I'm totally okay. with that. I'm totally with that. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Do you, do you think now from your perspective as a reasonable Democrat, if you were advising Democrats. I'm not a Democrat. I've never been associated with the Democratic Party. Really? What, yeah. Are you in any party or you're just independent? No. Yeah, I'm just independent. Would you, you would generally vote for Democrats, I would assume. I vote for more Democrats than Republicans. I don't care about parties, though. I see parties essentially almost like corporations that justify their own existence to just continue existing in opposition to the other, other party. Do you, do you really vote for Republicans? I voted for many, in, there's lots of nonpartisan local elections okay. where I later found out some of the people were not Democrats, but I mean, it's kind of neither here nor there. Okay. So, but you're not formally in the Democrat party. If you were advising a Democratic candidate or any candidate for that sure. matter, who sure. is on the left, would you advise them to continue running on this issue of abortion, on this issue of, uh, well, for instance, the bill that the Democrats last night tried to pass, it failed in the Senate. To, they said it was to codify Roe versus Wade. It actually went further to create even more abortion protections. Would you advise them to run on this issue in the midterms or to back away from it in the midterms? I So run on it. I think that there's two, from a political strategy standpoint, there's two options. One would be run on the bill that failed yesterday. That doesn't seem like a good idea to run on that. Yeah. Um, I, I think where there is, based on public opinion about abortion being as in favor of it as ever before during the Roe v. Wade era. Public polling is now in the 60, 70 percent of Americans believe abortion should generally be legal in most cases that that's not in every case, but in most cases based on that, it seems to me it would be prudent to run on. We need to get the government out of medical decisions between women and doctors. I mean, and again, you're I, you and I are never going to agree on something like when does life begin? That's a different. I well, we're we might agree on strategy. that. I, you know, I had a well, gal who. Whoa, 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 hold on. But let yeah. me at least finish my sentence. Sure. You asked me about strategy. It seems to me that since most Americans think abortion should be legal in most cases, the right strategy thing would be we need to get the federal government out of in the middle of these medical decisions. But but right now, if you if you let, let's say that the leaked opinion actually ends up being the final decision, let's say that Roe v. Sure. Wade is overruled instantly, sure. as Elizabeth Warren says, abortion is severely restricted, if not outlawed, in more than half of the states. Instantly, you you've, you you've, you're in a very different situation, sure. knowing that the there are all sorts of polls. There's polls that show that. 94% of Americans reject the absolutist view of abortion held by some Democrats. There are polls, as you cite, that show that when you ask the question, do you support Roe versus Wade broadly, then there is some majority of Americans that broadly want some abortion uh, liberality. Uh, yeah, so, but so, Michael, that's very mealy mouth. I mean, let's, it is let's, very let's, mealy -mouth. Just, let's You're just right. be honest. Ask the same way over the last 50 years, support for Roe v. Wade has continued to go up. Fair? 
Well, it depends how you ask the question. If you ask, ask the, it, the same way over the last 50 right, years, if, if you ask, that, it has gone up. If you ask the question in a way that is, uh, I think, hiding the reality of abortion and is just talking about the decision, Roe versus Wade, then uh, <laughs> sure, there's broad support for it. But if, you, but if you ask the question and you say, do you support this type of abortion? Do you support this type of abortion? Do you support, then the support is much, right, much smaller. See, this is, is, this is why the, the bill failed yesterday. Th- you're creating distinctions only to create doubt when the the point I'm making is over the last 50 years, generally overall, should abortion generally be legal in most cases? But the, Support but the, has gone up. It's but a, the, you can admit that and still be against it. No, like, but David, the, the problem is the devil is in the details because I, I mean, I've got a poll right here that, sh- that goes into depth on different aspects of abortion polling. That I'm it, not depending on how you change the, you depending on, on how you phrase the question, it, you get very different answers. So I guess my point is this: according to some of this polling, very few, yeah. very few voters and very very few independent voters, okay, w- support abortion as a top policy issue. It it does not seem to motivate a whole lot of people to go to the polls. Oh, is fair. So, I would agree with that. So I that, agree with that. So therefore, in that case, if you were advising these candidates. You know, you, you might say, okay, just keep using the same lines that Democrats have used since Roe versus Wade. But if you were talking about focusing a campaign, I think there are a lot of Democrats right now who say, we're going to run on this. This is going to motivate everyone to go to the polls. Make your campaign about abortion. Would you say that's a good strategy or would you say, hey, maybe back off a little bit and talk about, I don't know, gas prices? No, no, no. I don't think that's a good strategy. I mean, again, th- this is less about my opinion, but it's about what the facts show. The facts show that economic issues are far more important when it comes to running national campaigns. So, I, I mean, no disagreement there. These are these are just strategy questions. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. There's also there was polling that came out yesterday that showed that on the abortion question, in as much as it does motivate people, it's actually it, the Roe v. Wade overruling seems to be uh, propelling Republicans at om- almost two x the rate as uh, Democrats. So anyway, I, listen, I kn- David, I knew that you would be much more reasonable than uh, Joe Biden. Uh, David, that's all the time we have. Thank you very much for coming on though. As always. Oh my God, it's over. We haven't even talked about anything. We, yet. We've got, well, I, no, I think, I think uh, as I, I gave you a compliment, but uh, th- thankfully that's missing too. I, I think that you've uh, presented a more reasonable view than the White House has. I think you've presented better political advice than the White House has for their own party. And so I appreciate you for coming on. Uh, where can people find you? Uh, davidpackman.com. I can't imagine a more meaningful compliment and praise than that coming from you, Michael. Thank you. (laughs) David, thanks for coming on. Glad you liked that clip. Now ring that smash, like that subscribe, do the clicky thing. Make sure you get all the Michael Knowles show updates. You can also go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, subscribe to the Michael Knowles show, leave a five-star review, leave a 10-star review if you can. We'll see you next time.